going to begin by making the base of our picture and for this I'm going to start with a bamboo sushi mat which you can buy from a supermarket covered with a piece of bubble wrap with the bubbles facing upwards and then I'm going to lay out some of this merino wool now it's quite easy to take the fibres out of the wool and you do it by holding it lightly in one hand then grasp the ends quite tightly between your thumb and your forefingers and just ease them out gently and you get just a fine layer of wool coming out when you do that we're going to place that horizontally on the bamboo mat I'll show you again so hold it in one hand grasp the ends and let them slide out it doesn't matter if you get little bits and pieces in because they're going to get covered so I'll just lay that down see how easily it comes out when you're holding it gently because if you grasp this too tightly you're holding the ends of the fibres and it won't move I'm just doing it very very gently there's one section running vertically down the board I'm going to do another one I'm getting a nice fine even layer for my base and then for the third column coming down I take out the wool and instead of laying it down like that where I've got lots of fluffy ends I'm going to turn it over so I've got a straighter edge I'll show you again turn it over I've got a nice straight edge there got a nice even base there and we've got it running horizontally but we're also going to put a layer on vertically which will give your final fabric felt fabric strength there we are just laying it on carefully we're going to have a a lovely fine even layer to work on with our, our picture remember I'm just tipping it over the last layer we've got that straight edge there we are and if you do find that you've got any little ball patches all you need to do is just add a little bit extra to wherever it is make sure you've got some of the corners there we are, and then use your hands just to even it off all the way around. First I'm going to start by creating the sky in the picture. So I've got a, a variety of blues. I've got some light dream blue. I've got some cornflower blue. I've got a little bit of candy floss pink to give it um, a bit of excitement to the picture. And this is a um, merino wool with stellina fibre in. Now you could do this by just taking little bits and laying them across and adding the colours on, a bit like that. Or if you've got a dog brush at, the, at home, you could actually use this to combine your colours. So this is a dog brush that I've got and I like this one because it's got quite deep teeth on it. I've been using it for several years and it's still lasting nicely. So I'm going to just pull the wool across the teeth of my carder. So there's the light blue. So add just a little bit of the darker blue because I find that when you wet felt wool, it does tend to go darker. And to add a little bit of pink, this is just a bit of pink I've got out of my box. There we go. And for some sparkle, I'm going to add this Stellina fibre. There we go. So we've got a nice mix of colours there. So when you use the carders, you just drag it across gently and straight away you'll see that your colours are starting to mix. You see that? But on the bottom it'll still be unmixed, so I'll just flip it over and keep carding. And I should end up with a nice blend of colours for my sky. All that sparkle will work its way through. There we are. So just done it gently. 
I'm going to pull off the wool and just tease it in my fingers to mix it a little bit more and then quite randomly I'm just going to place it across the picture so some places you get more white some places you get more pink I like that bit of white so I'm just going to pull that across there we are so about a third of your picture is going to be the sky some of it will get covered later on but that's what we'll start with so can you see how random that is did it quite quickly and I've got some mulberry silk here it's um, a white mulberry silk and I like this because it's great for creating vapor trails and interest in your sky so I'm just following where I've got the white here I'm just going to add this mulberry silk uh, perhaps another little piece as well and I've got some sari silk here I'm just going to create a, a few fibres with this so I was quite liberal with the mulberry silk but with this just a, a small amount I'm going to really really tease it out and lay that across my picture as well yeah so that's added a bit of interest to the sky I've also got a little bit of this blue mulberry silk so I'm going to add a little bit of that it's meant to be quite a windswept sky you'll see how the wind's sweeping across there we are and for a bit of ad added effect we put a little bit of the extra white here as well there we are and perhaps a tiny bit of blue in the corner just so it's going right from dark down to light so I'm happy with that and that's the sky completed Now I'm going to create the background of the fields so I've got a lovely light yellow here so instead of using the carders I'm just going to pull the wool across and create a nice horizon there so I've got various colours of yellow and some light green to use as well I'll show you as we go so at this point it could easily be a seascape wouldn't it with a beach but this is definitely going to be a cornfield they're just laying it in little bits need those there we are so that's the light yellow and then I've got a little bit of marigold colour to put on here it's a little bit deeper it's got more warmth to it there we are so I'm graduating my colours here I've got some mustard, mustard yellow. So can you see how I'm going from the light and getting darker as I go down? The bottom. Once you've got your base down, it doesn't really matter which way that the wool goes for your picture. There we are. So I've used the yellows. And I've got this lovely lichen green here, which I use in a lot of landscapes. I'm just going to add a little bit of that in the front there. And to add a bit of texture, I'm going to twist it a little bit. I've got a little bit going across there. Twist it again, and it will stay twisted when you wet felt it. Like that. There we go. That's looking pretty. I might put a little bit of green on later. So that's the base of the cornfield. Now to create the corn, use lots of different fibres. So here I've got some yellow sari silk so I'm going to put it in the other direction this time give it a good twist now your hands have got lots of oils in them and it helps the, the wool to stay in the, in the shape that you want so this has got a nice shine on it which I like there we go 
just let it go where it falls. I'm just going to show you one section and then I'm going to continue working on that. Now I've got some mulberry silk. This is again lovely and shiny. A good twist. Just let it fall up there. I like it the other way actually. There we go. And that'll go when it um, is wet felted because it shrinks at a different rate to the wool. It'll go a lovely zigzaggy effect. So I'm doing them in different lengths. A little bit of this lovely lichen colour as well. What else have we got? Ah, here's some sari silk. To use a little bit of that too. It's got a nice wispy bit on it. So you can come back to me in a few minutes and when I've done a little bit more of this. I've continued working across the cornfield and finished putting all the pieces of corn in and along the bottom I'm just going to use some of this green just to cover the, the stalks at the bottom make it look a little bit more natural there we go and I'm going to use a little bit of the sari silk not much just going to take a few little strands of that and lay those across the bottom as well. And they'll move when we're wet felting and become far more natural. So I just got a little bit of greenery on the bottom and a little bit of this grass, the uh, forest green. There we go. Now up here it's looking a bit bare. And I want it to look as though there are poppies in the distance. So I'm just going to scatter a few of these red nips just round about as though there are little poppies in the distance over there. Quite randomly. Sometimes you'll have more in one place than another. So there are little poppies in the distance. It's looking more like a poppy field already. But in the foreground, I want to have some, some poppies that are a little bit bigger. I'm going to take some of this scarlet red and just create some little um, petals in the foreground. And it gives you a sense of perspective then as well. Hold that bit in, didn't want that out like that. some smaller ones as well. Just taking bits of this red. Don't need too much. Moulding them slightly in my fingers. shape. Have another one as well. little 
one here. And then we'll put the black centres in the poppies. They are quite abstract. And later on, if I need to, I can needle felt some more detail onto them. There we go. I'm just going to get some black for the middles of them. There we go. It's quite pretty. And so we've got the background poppies, we've got the foreground, and then with less detail, I'm just going to mould some little shapes for the middle section. I've just got a little bit of the, the red there to make it into a ball. Like that. I'm just going to put it a little bit further away, perhaps under some of here. That's it. It's not in the very foreground. And another little bit. You can use the wool very much like plasticine. Put that one there. And another one down here, I think. Get a bit more of a roll. There we are, it's this little ball. That's it. I'm to give those some black centres as well. They may move, but if they do, we can always um, felt them back in. There we go. Little poppies. And because you have other flowers there as well, I'm going to sprinkle some of these nips. So green, just for a little bit of texture. It makes quite a difference. And then I've got some nice magenta colour. Just to scatter a few little flowers. And a bit of orange. And I think I'll put some white there as well. So again, being quite random with this. I do love using nets. I've got so many colours. They make a real difference. Well, I'm going to show you a little trick in a moment. When you put your nets on, they do tend to fall off in the wet felting process. So just add a little bit of merino wool over the top and that helps secure them. And then this darker green that I've got. Pull a little bit off, I'll cut, even cut that little bit. I've got a stem here for the poppy. There we are. Put that on there like that. Just on the ones in the foreground. One. 
这边。The one for that one. Not missing on the end. There we are, and finally, we do a few little white specks in the distance. I think. Who knows what they are? There we go. Just adds a little variety and texture to the work. And that's the picture laid out ready for wet felting. Now the next stage is to wet felt our picture. So we've created a design using woolen fibres which are dry and also lots of effect fibres such as the silk and the angelina fibre. And by wetting them and massaging them with hot soapy water, um, the fibres will combine together to create a fabric. And this is called the fulling process. Now to protect the picture so that the, everything doesn't move around, I'm going to put a piece of netting over the top, just like that. Once it's on, try not to move it again because the fibres will move along with the netting. So you can use this, which is tool from uh, haberdashery, or you can use old net curtains for this. And then we're going to put on hot soapy water. Now for the soap, I'm using um, grated olive oil soap. I'm just going to sprinkle it on. But if you don't have any of this, just add some um, washing up detergent to your water and that'll, that'll do the same, same job. Um, the olive oil soap is a little bit kinder if you've got sensitive skin. So I've put on some about a teaspoonful of olive oil soap and then I'm going to suck up some water using a ball browse. Now the ball browse um, is very handy, it um, works a bit like a pipette and it's used by bonsai growers for watering their plants. So if you just depress it and suck up some water you're then able to spray it over the picture. If you don't have one of these, um, you can use a sports top water bottle, which will do the job well as well. So I'm going to suck the water up. So it's now in the ball, in the bulb of the ball browse. And just going to squirt it all over. Not too much, because you'll find that it goes everywhere and it's very messy. So that should be enough. And we can tell when there's enough in because the, the work will flatten. Then I'm going to use my fulling tool. Um, there are lots of different designs, you can get wooden ones. Um, if you don't have a fulling tool, then just use some scrunched up bubble wrap instead and that will do the job just as well. So very, very gently, to begin with, following the line of my picture, I'm just going to rub it. So I'm following that um, silk that I put into the sky. Can you see all the moisture has made it flatten down? And there where I've got my cornfield, just very gently, I'm going to go over where the flowers are. We can get a lot more firm with this later on. And then where I've got the bottom, I do think I need a little bit more water on there, so I'm just going to spray some along the bottom. There we go. It's always handy to have some kitchen towel handy, just in case it starts to flood on the table. There we are. Still a bit dry on the bottom. You never quite know. I think it's because we've got more wool on that bit. Some more on. There, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to give that a good rub. So this is fulling felt. So it's warm, soapy water. You can see how the fibres are all starting to react. And when you've been doing it just for about a minute, what I normally do is I lift up um, the netting just to check to see if anything's moved. Now that little black bit's moved there to the centre of my poppy. I'm just going to re-centre it a little bit. They look okay. Let's move that one down. There we are. That one I quite like there. And replace the netting. 
There we are, and just keep rubbing with the fulling tool all the bubble wrap that you've got. So, starting to create nice foam on top, which will all help the fulling process. And already the fibres will have started to knit together, but it's nowhere near ready yet. So I'm trying to get all the way around the sides and I'll keep going with this for another five minutes. Now that I've finished rubbing the wool with the fulling tool, I'm going to move over to a roller to give it a good rolling. Now you can get wooden rollers which are far more traditional, but I've got um, what's just a massage roller and this works really well. So whichever way you roll the, your picture, that's the way that the wool will shrink. So we need to roll it in all directions. And it's quite nice because you can see the picture underneath. And if you look there, you can see how the um, silk's reacting to the fulling process, how it's getting that lovely wiggly line there. So fold it that way. And because you've got it on the mat, it's easy to turn. So we're just going to turn it and roll it in the other direction. Being careful not to overlap the wool. That's it. So again, I'm going to keep doing this for about five minutes. And then the next uh, stage of the process will be rolling it in a towel. Now we're going to start the final stage of the wet felting process. If you have a little look at what you've been doing, you can see that it's started to turn into a fabric, but it's still not quite there yet. And this is still a little bit wet as well, but I'll show you what to do if yours is too wet. So we've still got the bamboo mat and the bubble wrap, the work and the netting. I'm going to get a piece of pipe insulation and I'm going to roll it all up together like a Swiss roll. I find that using the pipe insulation helps with it for rolling later on. And getting the bowl, I'm just going to squeeze out any excess water so that when we start rolling it doesn't go all over the table. And also if the work's too wet, the fibres will just roll over each other and they won't felt properly. That's got the excess water out. Then I'm going to lay out a towel, just a, a small hand towel, and roll up the bamboo mat within it. What I normally do is just put it over the top, like that, and then start to roll. There we are. And we need to roll equally in each direction. So we're going to do it in four directions, starting um, this way. And I'm going to give it 50 rolls. One. But keep going like this. When I've got to 50, you just need to open it out. Open the bamboo mat and the picture from underneath. Take off the netting, do it carefully like that. It might have stuck slightly, but it's okay. There we are. I'm just double checking that I haven't got any creases in. Now there was a little crease there, but that's gone now. So you lift up just the bubble wrap and the picture, turn it 90 degrees, so it's a quarter turn. Put the netting back over roll it in the roller and then again in the towel. So you're going to repeat that process four times rolling for 50 rolls in each direction so each time you're going to give it a quarter turn. So I'll let you get on with that and we'll be back again soon. Now I've finished rolling the felt and it's time to unwrap it.
There it is, looking lovely. Just put these out of the way. Right, well I can tell from the felt that it feels quite robust. But the way of checking whether it's ready, whether it's been wet felted properly, is just to check underneath. And what I normally do from experience is just roll my fingers over the fibres, rub them over, and if the fibres move then it needs more rolling, but these aren't moving and it tells me that the felt's ready. Now if you over felt your felt and you roll it too much, then it, it shrinks too much and you lose the definition of your picture. But this one's just right. So I now need to rinse it. So I'll take it downstairs and I'll rinse it in cold water under the tap. Then I'll put it in the bottom of the sink and pour on some hot water from the kettle. And then I'll run some more cold water onto it until I'm able to pick it up and give it a really good squeeze. So it doesn't matter when you're rinsing your felt and you're getting rid of the soap, that you actually roll it up like this because you're not going to harm it. It's been through quite um, a, a vicious process anyway. So then it'll be time to dry it. And as I'm short of time, I'm going to dry it with my hairdryer. But if you've got more time, put it on the radiator or you can um, leave it overnight airing. Um, if you look at this, it's a little bit crumpled. So when it's dry, I shall iron the back using um, a piece of kitchen roll underneath to protect the ironing board. Now you can iron it on quite a hot iron, but don't iron the front because this lovely Stellina fibre here, that will uh, disintegrate and turn to dust. The Angelina fibre, it's fine to iron that but that would actually turn, um, it would either stick to your iron without baking parchment or it would um, start to turn to a fabric. So that's why we iron it on the back. All right, so I'm going to go and do that and I'll get back to you in a few minutes. The stage of wet felting is finished now. My picture is now dry. So at this stage, if you're happy with your picture, you can then leave it and frame it. You can put a little frame over. It does look pretty. Or you can go on and use needle felting techniques to enhance it some more. Now some people like to frame the picture showing the edges. So if that's the case, you might just want to pull them out a little bit. Because the wool's stretchy and you're not going to harm it. But you can straighten out the edges this way. And it is a nice to see the raw edges if you get it framed properly. And that's the finished picture.